I got a sentence that said, I want to kiss the mole on her neck. And all I could picture was lips to a hairy mole, and I lost it. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Holly, and today I am coming at you with my February wrap-up. You know how this goes, I'm going to be showing you all the books that I managed to read in the month of February. Now, I did read a total of five books, which I'm really pleased with. That seems to be about my average. Um, I'm so jealous of those of you who could read like 10 books in a month. A freaking witchcraft if I ever saw it. <laughs> no, you guys are awesome, I love it. But I didn't read as much as I wanted to read. Um, I'm going to blame February for just being a bitch. Let's be real here. February cock blocked. No, Holly, do not edit that out. It began with a chill in the air and then cascaded into a pit of hell. Anyways, in terms of quality, I'd say it was an okay month. Um, I have a new favorite, which is great, but also a major disappointment. It evens out, I guess. I'm going to start this video with my favorite read of the entire month because I want to start on a high note and I just desperately need a gush about this book and that is Never Die. I'm beginning to realize more and more that Asian-based fantasies, which is what this is, rarely disappoint me and what this one nails for me the most are its characters. It's a five-star read so everything was pretty much perfection in my eyes but if you want a group of characters who will protect each other no matter the costs this one is for you. Even if it's not for you, I don't care. Go freaking read it. I'm going to do my best to navigate what this book is about without any spoilers, but just know the basis of the plot does surround death. The most important character in this entire story is Ian, who is a little boy, and we learn very early on that he was charged with a mission by a god of death to kill the emperor. And to do so, obviously he can't do it alone, so he has to gather a band of famous heroes and bind them to him, but to do that, they have to die first. That synopsis literally gives me chills, and the little boy is definitely creepy himself, like the sixth sense um, kind of creepy. So we actually get to see the story through the eyes of all these characters on the cover, but the most prominent one is Cho, our front woman, and she's the epitome of a badass. Next time I'm in the gym, I need to like embody her spirit because I'd probably get a hell of a workout in. But anyways, she's so cool. Honestly, every character was so legendary. They each have a backstory, a reason to live or not to live, um, a different fighting technique. I read 600 page books that don't even get characters right, and Hayes did it in less than half the time while having a heartbreaking emotional story along with it. I mean, this is a short book, and damn it, do I wish it was longer because it was such a great escape. But thankfully, we do have other books in this universe, which I will be continuing in March. In fact, you can check out my uh, March TBR right here. I uploaded that a few days ago. This book is also incredibly quotable, and that comes with his writing. It's beautiful. His style is more down to earth, a bit more to the point, yet still like vividly descriptive and gets the job done. Um, I found myself getting wonderfully lost in this world as it was described to me. And the amount of times I highlighted something, um, it could be a novella all its own. Um, if you love subtle, immersive world building and highly character driven novels, you need to read this and you fly through it. Um, it is not a book you'll want to set down for long. This is my second five-star read from this author, and I think, I think that solidifies it for me of Rob J. Hayes. He's on my coveted list of favorite authors. Pick this one up. I highly recommend it. The next book I'm going to talk about is Of Sand and Malice Made. Um, this was actually the first book I picked up in February. It's a very short book, so picking it up first thing in February gave me a confidence boost. It made me feel successful early on in the month. I highly recommend doing that. This is a prequel novella to the Song of Shattered Sand series, and I'm so glad that I picked it up right after a Veil of Spears, which is the third book in the series because it was perfect. The events that happened in that third book played out so nicely here with the knowledge that you now know. Um, there's a lot of characters and creatures you meet in A Veil of Spears that are in this book. No spoilers, of course, but this follows Cheda, the main character in the series, when she was just a child and her dealings with a certain demon. Um, it's separated in three parts, and I will admit I didn't enjoy part one a ton because I kind of read like a 
weird fever dream and fun fact i'm not like a big fan of that kind of stuff um just confuses the hell out of me most of the time but afterwards i was completely into it is this necessary to read no and i'll admit i will only pick up novellas the series i am heavily invested in and this was good it's just an interesting little side story about how two characters came to meet um i ended up giving this three out of five stars i liked it it's a novella i didn't expect it to be bold and like mind-blowing but it did make me more excited to read about the demon it centers on. Um, it's going to be more fun now to see her in the future books. Until she's killed off, probably. <laughs> okay, so while we are on the topic, I might as well talk about Beneath the Twisted Trees next, um, which is the fourth book in the series, even though it was the last book I finished. Actually, uh, I just recently finished it a few days into March but it still counts in this video, I think. This is one big cinder block of a book. It's the biggest book in the series, and holy crap, does it start out strong. So the previous installment of Veil of Spears, the last half was so insane. It ended on a freaking bang, and this book rides its curtails. It stays on that same trajectory in the middle of all of that action that we were left dealing with. Every single chapter and perspective it felt like had something big to reveal, um, definitely another worthy addition. Truly the first book um, misleads you because it barely scratches the surface to how deep the story actually goes. I am just reading sequel after sequel with a shocked expression on my face. It's more complex than ever before. So because we are pretty deep in the story, I will say the amount of plot lines are really piling up as this one introduced even more characters so I feel like I was having a hard time keeping track of them all and remembering where they are and what they're doing but other than that great I gave this four out of five stars I am nearing the end of the series with only two books left but I know there's probably going to be plenty of more books for me by this author in the future so that is something to hold on to another book that I read in February was wild and wicked things now this is an arc and actually comes out this month so if you are intrigued by it you can check it out um there's been a lot of promotional buzz for this and honestly it was the synopsis that really drew me in and what made me pick it up even more in the end was this fan art because my god the step on me energy unfortunately i was disappointed this is a historical fiction and it's labeled as fantasy but i've been calling it magical realism because i think that fits it a little bit better as it takes place during the world war one and follows the events of the prohibition and we follow annie at the beginning of the novel we see her arrive on crow island um because here is where the cottage her father owned who passed away and has given it to her through inheritance she's not there long when she hears a bopping party at her neighbor's house um rumor has it that this house she lives next to has a reputation both good but mostly bad and there is where the magic element comes in magic was used during the war to create these super soldiers and it was banned um the conception of magic in any form is strictly prohibited but crow island is a like a place of fortune it is where the rich live people have so much money that using pieces of magic is like just a game to them they're not worried about getting fined that's chump money and annie's popular neighbor is known for her party where she uses this witchcraft like magic on her guests and this is where you could say like the plot thickens the laws are getting stricter there are more severe penalties for crimes of magic committed on the island so after reading so many fantasies where magic is just a given and then to read a book where it isn't so much and it has a cool historical purpose behind it really refreshing also magic is like food and drink basically it's in the form of herbs which is why gardens are even kind of like sketchy in this universe so the first day i read this i was super into it it was cozy magical interesting i flew through the first 100 pages and then the second day i picked it up it was like I was reading a totally different book. It became very serious and heavy. The whole Gatsby pitch is gone. There's a lot of physical abuse that occurs. And then there was actually a rape scene that just felt totally out of the blue for me. And halfway through, I realized, man, this book just wasn't written for a reader like me. I will say I'm also disappointed in Emmeline, Emmeline, um, we're just going to call her M, who is the Gatsby-like witch character, um, this fan art right here. I wanted her to have like that step on me energy and she just doesn't. In fact, she felt like the weakest character in my opinion. All the side characters are constantly scolding her like a child, constantly altering her choices and she just goes with it. Uh, I really wanted her to be the leader and she 
just is is she's kind of like the follower. She didn't have any backbone. She felt like a puppet for her roommates. So maybe it's not that I had a problem with her. Maybe her side character friends held her back from being the boss lady that I wanted her to be. Um, I hate it when there's constant arguing. No one can agree on anything and then they all hate each other. Nothing is getting done. Bad decisions are being made because of the arguing. That's the entirety of the second half. Oh, and this is really random and too, totally picky. Um, I got a sentence that said, I want to kiss the mole on her neck. And all I could picture was lips to a hairy mole, and I lost it. <laughs> I should have DNF this, but I pushed to the end. I ended up giving it 2 out of 5 stars. Um, I need to stop doing that. I love the beginning, but once you actually meet the characters and the plot starts, I was over it. So the last book I'm talking about today is Rise of the Mages. This is a new adult fantasy coming from Tor Books and this is a book that begins with a really ominous prologue which was a great start for me because I am pro prologue. Give them to me all freaking day. It kind of gives you like a little sneak peek on what our characters are probably going to have to be dealing with. It gives you little snippets of the magic. Prologues are like someone holding a delicious cake in front of you and they tell you you're only allowed to like take your finger and swipe a little frosting. I think that's a great comparison. <laughs> so the writing, the humor, and even the world building reminded me a lot of Blood of an Exile, which is also from Tor Books. Oh wow, look at that. They actually go so well together. So as I said before, this is an adult fantasy. Um, it's the first book to a brand new series. Exciting, right? And I think what Drakeford has created here is really cool. Um, if you are like me and enjoy your stories that are fast-paced with a dark villain, war, um, mixed with found family, and a pretty complex magic system, then this book you should try out. The base of the story surrounds two brothers who attempt to flee the school that they have been training at, and one of them is captured. And of course, through brotherly love, our main character goes on a revenge quest to punish those who took his brother. And he will do literally whatever it takes. The author does a tremendous job of taking the reader along the character's journey, and though I enjoyed that in many other aspects, there was one major factor that hindered my love for it, and that was that I found it really hard for me to care for the main character, and when that happens, it will of course affect my enjoyment overall. I don't know why, I just had a really hard time feeling sympathy for him and to root for him on his quest. I didn't find him relatable. There was just some depth there missing with his personality, I think. So I ended up giving this 3 out of 5 stars. I think it was a really cool idea, especially for a debut, and this author's strength for sure is pacing in action because there was a ton of it. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Alrighty, so that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, tell me down below which books that you read in February because I would love to know. I'm actually really happy with what I read. Hopefully I can read even more in March. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up because it really helps me out and subscribe if you haven't. I upload videos every single week and until I meet again, happy reading.